So welcome to the latest edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today we are with Dr. Derek Wenmuth, uh, one of my colleagues from uh, New Zealand and coming to us from, I'm guessing, Wellington? Wellington today. All right. So uh, can we start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, Derek? Oh, well, I've been in education all my life and uh, distance education probably for about the last 30, 35 years. <clears throat> so before the World Wide Web, coming up through correspondence, um, working in uh, schools, principalship, uh, ministry, our New Zealand correspondence school, as it was known in those days. So my interest in, um, in education is pretty broad, diverse. Okay. Now, Derek, I know you've done a lot of work when you were at CORE looking at professional development with uh, folks using technology in the classroom, particularly with the, the virtual learning network that's down there. Um, knowing that we've got folks all around the world right now that are being asked to move their instruction into a, a remote setting, often without much in the way of training, um, in very short order, uh, what would you tell them in terms of some advice or guidance that might help them for the next few weeks or a month or two huh. till they get their bearings. It's, it's a big order. Look, I, for me, remote or distance or online learning, whatever you're going to call it, it, it comprises three important things. One is around uh, the support, one's around the pedagogy, one's around the content. And those strands weave together in, in our face-to-face -face teaching as well. And I think we saw this when I experienced the Christchurch earthquakes a few years ago, and I was involved in this there was an enormous uh, sense of having to shift immediately in thinking about online learning to thinking about the content. And so there were big collections of content made up all over the place. And we see this happening all over the world at the moment. Um, uh, and, and that's useful and it's an important part of it, but on its own, it doesn't work. And one of the things I think we really need to understand is that the content won't on, in and of itself work unless you have a really thoroughly thought through pedagogical approach. And so understanding what we need to do online, that it's not just a transfer from face-to-face -face, uh, experience. There are, there are new skills, there are new approaches we need to learn online. But I think the thing I just wanted to emphasize in chatting with you this morning, Michael, is that third part, which is around support. And, and at the heart of that is relationships. And education and learning is, is fundamentally about relationships. We build relationships with our kids in classes, in schools. And so uh, good learning is about feedback. It's about support. It's about feeling a part of a thing. And um, right at the moment with our kids, particularly in New Zealand, we've just gone complete lockdown here as of uh, today. Um, and there's a fair amount of anxiety, stress, and different people respond to that in different ways. Uh, I was talking to my daughter this morning, and her kids are sitting around the table, they're just eager beavers to do the work that they've been set. I was talking to another friend whose kids are at home really anxious and, and not wanting to get out of bed this morning. And so it's important that we understand that, that content and delivery and all this is just a part of that, and we can't let go of what fundamentally makes us good teachers and that is the relationships we have with our kids. Now you, you mentioned some of the conversations you've had with folks about you know what's happening in, in their homes. Um, the other part of this equation now is, is obviously you know the kids aren't in a schooling environment anymore now they're at home so for many parents it's the first time that they've had to uh, support their child's learning in a direct way you know 24 hours a day kind of thing so um, based on your experience and particularly thinking back to what we went through with the, the Christchurch earthquakes, are there any sort of things that you would say to parents right now that uh, might be struggling in terms of how to go about doing this and, and making sure things are good for their children? I, I think um, it's a good question, Michael, and there's actually a lot to answer in that question. Um, I think the first point I'd make is uh, I think it highlights really the partnership that, that ought to be a part of a healthy um, uh, learning experience for kids anyway, the partnership between the school, the home, the kid, and so forth. And, and often we find that, that there's been a bit of an abdication along the way or an uncertainty. We're not really sure about, um, about what our, our roles are in that, particularly as parents. Um, so 
I read a, a thing on on Facebook yesterday. A parent sort of saying, "Ah, don't don't thrust it all on me. I was never trained to do this. I don't understand the the work." Blah blah blah. And I, I'm sure that there will be parents at home who feel a little like that. There are other issues to do with um, where do you find a place for them to work um, and to, to you know to be able to curl up and, and to read, to study, to to do the things they are. So another one is how do you pace it through the day? And I remember back in my correspondence school days, one of the things that uh, I thought they did particularly well there is understand that actually the, the, the day for a learner who is learning virtually often is a very different thing from the, three, the nine to three slot that schools work, all right? So my advice is really don't try and force the school routine into your home routine. Find, find something that's gonna work with the flow uh, of how you work there, um, set aside a place if you can where learning happens, and but make sure there's heaps of fun as well. And don't forget that learning happens through playing games, table games. It it it, it happens through reading books and magazines, through conversation, through the particularly at this time jumping on to Skype and talking with grandparents and talking with friends around the place. There's just as much learning in there as there is the the important support stuff that we're giving each other. So uh, I guess I'd sum it up. Don't stress about this, but look for the ways that will make it fit with the flow of what you do at home. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Derek. This has been another five minutes on K-12 online learning. And today it's been with Dr. Derek Wendeth. Thanks, Michael.